I believe the number was they had already purchased that we believe to this date, and the number changes, something like 400 firearms. By the time we initiated our OSADEF strategy to, to focus on the entire organization, I think it was close to 1,000 firearms. By the time we I, opened I, up our OSADEF I, 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 I must have missed something, because it seems to me if there were 2,000 weapons that were sold and went into the, uh, and, and you were investigating this and you were trying to find the criminals that were buying them, that there would be a record of all of the weapons that were sold. We have a record of all the weapons that were sold. No, sir, because we are still to this day discovering firearms that were purchased by these individuals okay, that well, we weren't if, aware well, of. Do you have a record of the ones that purchased those individuals, I mean purchased those weapons, the individuals that purchased those weapons? The ones that we are aware of, yes, sir, we do have. You them. have records of all those? I do believe so, yes, sir. And you are still in the process of making the case on this? Because we are identifying additional suspects as we go, yes, sir. I oh, would the gentleman yield? Yes. So let me understand from previous testimony. Agents were there at the scene, videotape or video uh, observance, digital video observance of, uh, occurred as they bought them. The agents in many, many cases followed the suspect, leaving with 6, 10, 20 weapons for a period of time. And then they were ordered by this task force to break off and let those weapons continue going. And you have charged Mr. Acosta, one of the 20 uh, defendants, the only one that is not just a, a meth user who was straw buying, you have charged him with being trafficking. When did you know that Acosta was trafficking weapons in, his intent was to traffic weapons into Mexico? And when me weapons occurred in Mexico that you knew Acosta had received from straw buyers and they turned up at crime scenes in, in Mexico, then what did you do? Sir, as it as a, as a relates to Mr. Acosta, I believe we, it was Mr. Acosta, sir, or? Acosta. Mr. Acosta? The, he's, he's the money man. Well, actually, Mr. Acosta in this investigation right now is the head of the Phoenix cell of, of this trafficking organization. Right. So. When, and and, and you, you knew he was trafficking, you knew he was receiving these weapons, you knew these weapons were showing up at crime scenes. Well, the, I'm just, I'm just one understanding, and I, my time's expired. But why you couldn't seem to answer the gentleman's question straightforward? You knew guns that you would watched be delivered or brought to be purchased went to third parties and ended up in Mexico, and yet this program continued as though you somehow didn't know they were being that the purchasers, the same purchaser who had purchased guns that were already in Mexico, was purchasing more. I yield back. Uh, I think. Uh, who do we have next? Mr. Give me the list. Davis. Mr. Davis is next for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Liebman, you have been at ATF for seven years studying gun trafficking on the southwest border. Before that, you were a homicide detective here in Washington, D.C., for many years. Can you describe to us briefly? how the Mexican drug cartels get firearms from the United States? Uh, yes, sir. I guess the one way to kind of summarize this is it kind of came to light to me several years ago when uh, an individual describing it to me put it as follows. It says the Mexican people have been uh, trafficking drugs into the United States since 1880. They have also been buying Sam Colt's guns since 1880. So that kind of gives you a groundwork of the culture and the reason why we have this problem, because we have these firearms being sold and the Mexicans uh, are coming up, these cartels, and they are purchasing these weapons. That's, that's a fact. In your experience, what type of weapons are in demand by the uh, cartels? Um, it's like I um, alluded to in my um, written testimony, which I didn't get to finish, but. There is a, uh, we have actually gone in and identified a lot of uh, what we call DTO preferred weapons. And these are usually your AKs, your ARs. Um, they like the 38 Supers, the 45s. We've got a list of them. And in this particular case, the firearms being purchased by, all the firearms being purchased by these individuals what, were let me ask, DTO preferred. Why do you weapons. think they, they, focus on these type 
weapons? Because they are uh, weapons to use to, to, one, they have to uh, protect themselves against their rivals, two, they are confronted by law enforcement in Mexico and the military, so they need this type of firepower and that, that heavier firepower to exist down there. Thank you. Mr. Wall, you have spent the last 19 years as an ATF special agent and have most recently served as the ATF representative in Tijuana, Mexico. We have heard a lot today about the problem of gun trafficking in Mexico, and I am hoping that you can help me better understand the problem. Based on your experiences in Mexico, where are the cartels' guns coming from? From my experience, the majority come from the United States. Are you seeing a representative sample of all guns used in crimes in Mexico? Are, are the Mexican authorities just maybe showing you firearms that they believe come from the United States? They, um, they make them available to us. Uh, in the last four years, since uh, 2007, I have probably looked at over, slightly over 2,000 firearms in Mexico. These are firearms that um, I went out and soon after they were seized at a crime scene or at a, a stash house, uh, I went out and examined the guns. And uh, of those 2,000, um, less than 50, let's just say 50 of them, uh, I, could, I could tell were from uh, foreign manufacture, meaning outside the U.S., possibly from uh, South America. Uh, guns that maybe were uh, tied back to uh, even the guerrilla wars in Central America. So you believe that these statistics are accurate, that, that they are real? I know guns, and I know what I see, and I am the person on the ground, yes, sir. Are you finding many of the weapons coming from Central America? Some people seem to think that some actually are coming from Central America. Do you think that many of them are? Some do, yes, especially with some groups. Uh, certain cartels have more of a tendency to, to acquire their firearms in, in Central America or South America, possibly even from guerrilla groups. However, um, the other cartels, the ones uh, that, are, that I'm familiar with, uh, most of their firearms are U.S. sourced firearms. So you think the United States is the main source of these weapons? Yes, sir, I do. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. I thank the gentleman. We now go to the gentleman from Utah, Mr. Chaffetz, for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Agent Newell, uh, when did you first become aware, uh, know, anticipate, or maybe even suspect that uh, these firearms in this program were being transported or transferred into Mexico? Sir, when we, we, I think we started getting the uh, first traces, um, I want to say, I believe sometime in November of 2009, yes, sir. So in November of 2009, you believe that they are being transferred or, or uh, uh, transported into Mexico. Um, did that cause you any concern? Yes, sir. It always does. But you say here, but the program continued on knowing full well that these guns were going to Mexico. You said in your opening statement here, it is not the purpose of the investigation to permit the transportation of firearms into Mexico. When we were lawfully able to seize firearms in this case, and the many, many firearms trafficking cases we conduct in Phoenix and Arizona and across the southwest border, we take every effort to, to stop that, yes, sir. But in a January, coming out of your office, in a January 2010, I mean, you, you testified today in your opening statement it was not the purpose of the investigation to permit the transportation of firearms into Mexico. That is today. Yes, sir. Yet in February or March, I am sorry, January 8, 2010, it, in this memo, point number 13, you write, or it is written, currently our strategy is to allow the transfer of firearms to continue to take place, albeit at a much slower place in order to further the investigation, allow for the identification of additional co-conspirators who would continue to operate and illegally traffic firearms to Mexico drug trafficking organizations. So it was the goal, it was the intention of the program to allow guns to be trafficked to Mexico, based on this memo. Is that correct? No, sir. What is wrong with it? 
That's from your statement. It also, it also says in here, a number of different seizures in Mexico. It seems very inconsistent at best to suggest that it was not the purpose to allow them to go to Mexico, yet you know in, two, in, in 2009 that they're going to Mexico, and you put it in a memo in 2010, January 2010. How are those statements compatible? Well, sir, if I may, and I'm, and I'm glad I'm given the opportunity to clarify that paragraph that has been uh, obviously um, well publicized. The wording in that, the way my understanding was when that briefing paper was drafted, was that our efforts to allow the transfer to identify additional co-conspirators was so that we could further the investigation, take out the whole organization. Otherwise, these individuals would, in fact, continue in a lar part, part of a larger. So you allowed? Is it hundreds or thousands of weapons to continue to flow through this program and go into Mexico? I'm, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question, sir? How many addition? How many hundreds or thousands of weapons did you allow to be purchased, knowing that they were going to Mexico? Sir, the, the purchase was being done by a criminal organization, a large But scale. you facilitated it. You allowed it, did you not? I mean, that was part of the program. Allow these straw purchasers to happen so that the guns could end up in Mexico. And you know in 2009 that that's happening. Sir, again, the goal of the organization, the goal of the investigation was to disrupt and dismantle the entire I know. I understand the goal. But you were purposely, the problem is you're purposely, knowingly, allowing the guns to go to Mexico, and you have information in 2009 that it is being successful, yet you never put a stop to it. It is meeting the goals and intentions you laid out in this memo in January of 2010, and it continued on and on. And consequently, there were thousands of weapons that ended up in Mexico killing people, killing people. That is the reason that we are here today. When did you first know or think that guns were walking? Sir, in this investigation, as best of my knowledge, we didn't let guns walk for that perspective. When did you first think that they were? Were what, walking? Walking, yes. Sir, again, the policy... Did you ever, did you, have you ever thought that they were walking? Sir, the policy regarding transfer of firearms regards the fact that we are trying to develop an investigation... I know what you are trying. When did you first think that guns were walking? Sir, I, I, again, the goal of the investigation... I, I, when did you first think that guns were walking? Did you ever think that? Do you think that here today? I truly believe, as I have said before, that I didn't, we didn't let, intentionally let guns walk. Let's go to slide two, if we could, please. This is an email from Mr. Newell to Mr. McMahon on December 21, 2010, six days after Brian Terry was killed. Quote, since I don't like the perception that we allowed guns to walk, I had David Voth pull the numbers of the guns recovered in Mexico, as well as those we had a direct role in taking off here in the U.S. So you tell me you didn't, you didn't suspect that uh, the guns were walking? As my email says, it's about the perception. There's, there was, I didn't want people to think there was a perception, because in my mind that was not the case. How were guns not walking? Sorry, gun, knowing and proving that the transfer or purchase of firearms is illegal are two different things. I am asking, look, this is one month before the indictments and two months before John Dodson went on CBS News with the accusations that the case was still an active investigation. Why did you have Mr. Voth pull the numbers one day after the Terry murder for the number of guns recovered in Mexico and the United States? And did you know that Fast and Furious was about to come under massive scrutiny? I did not know at that time that it was going to come under this level of scrutiny, no, sir. What is the difference between, uh, explain to me why you don't think the guns were walking. You obviously thought that.